Well, good morning. Another Sunday has come and gone, and we're still not together. But there's a little bigger light at the end of the tunnel this week, and I suspect that the light will continue to get bigger and bigger until we're allowed to. And that's a very interesting thing because today we're going to talk about some light. We're going to talk about the light in heaven, among other things. So get you a cup of coffee and open your Bibles to the 22nd chapter of Revelations. Don't run. <laughs> Don't hide. It's not these verses won't be that hard. But if you can, you don't have to stay for the lesson. If you fully understand the book of Revelations, which is where we'll be today, if you do, then you're far above my pay grade and you can come, you can go on and do something else in the next 30 minutes. Uh, but if not, let's get started with a word of prayer. Father God, how great your word is and how great it is to hear your word. And thank you, Lord, for giving us these glimpses of heaven. Lord, we don't begin to believe that we can comprehend what we're reading. We don't begin to understand our minds are not big enough. But we thank you for giving us this because it gives us hope. We thank you, Father, for the healing we see. We thank you, Lord, for the way that this nation is turning back to you. We really believe, Lord, that this coming, that good will come from this time in our lives. A time when families are spending more time together. A time when you don't hear the government talk about prayer so badly. And the word God is not thought so poorly of. We thank you for that. We ask you to continue to heal us, to draw us back and make us truly a godly nation. In Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. Well, I warned you that we were going to heaven today, so get on the bus. And let's take a look around. Now, folks, heaven is not going to be like it's been described by some. We recently lost a folk, a folk <clears throat> musician a songwriter of great renown by the name of John Prine. John Prine described heaven. What he was going to do when he got to heaven was smoke a cigarette nine feet long. He was going to kiss a girl on a, twer on a tw tilt of world, and then he was going to form a rock and roll band. Now, folks, heaven's just not going to be like that. I'm sorry, but it's just not going to be. But today we're going to take a look at what it is what the Bible says it is. We're going straight to the scripture. And while it might scare you to read parts of Revelation, this part is not scary. So get comfortable. We in God's grace in our lives. We're, this whole month, we're going to be talking about God's grace. And today we're going to see the biggest and best example that we can have of that. And that's the heaven that he has prepared for us. We're going to be looking at a lot of scripture and talking about a lot of scripture. Uh, it's very unusual for us to cover so much, and it might seem a little strange because we're starting at the end of the Bible. In fact, the 22nd chapter of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. Next week, we'll go to one of the first book chapters of the Bible in Genesis. But for this week, we're going to look at John and what he was allowed to see, the vision that he had. Now, we can't start, we're gonna look at eventually our focal passage is Revelations 22, one through five, but to get this whole story, you've got to go back to the 21st chapter and starting in about verse nine and read that and that's where the angel, one of the seven angels of the Lord comes to John and takes him to a high mountain and gives, gives him this glimpse of heaven. This particular lesson needs the interaction of a Sunday school room. It needs to hear from different people what they see heaven being like. We won't get that, but you can remember, you can use your imagination as we go through the lesson 
and you can feel what it would be like for you. I don't know whether we'll be right or wrong. Don't have any idea. Don't know anybody that's been there and come back. <laughs> so <clears throat> the best we could do is examine what the Bible says and use our imaginations. God's grace is there from the start to the finish of, this Bible, of our Bible. And today, we're going to be talking about the new Jerusalem, the one that descends out of heaven. We're going to see what it's going to look like. <clears throat> it will be a new time, a new generation. So let's get started, and I'm going to read the first verses of the 22nd chapter of Revelations, and when I get through, then we'll go through them in a little more detail. And there I'm going to ask you to really use your imagination, but for now, let's just listen to the word. Revelations 22, 1 through 5. Then he showed me the river of living water, sparkling like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the broad street of the city, the tree of life was on both sides of the river, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his slaves will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will no longer exist, and people will not need lamp light or sunlight, because the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow. What descriptive language. Let's go now and examine very closely the, these verses, and let's really look at the nouns. He showed me the river of living water. Do you see in your mind a raging river full of current and fast-moving water? Or do you see a little peaceful brook gently flowing? Isn't it amazing how our minds work and we can... Can you hear the water? Are there rocks in the river creating the rippling sound? What do you feel like? Is it cool by the water? Is the water tepid or is the water cool? I can promise you it's not tepid. It's either, it's more likely it's a little on the cool side. <clears throat> so what does it look like? Is it green like the ocean? Well, it says it's sparkling like crystal, so it must be crystal clear. How about that? How about that? And it flows from the throne of God and the Lamb. Two thrones. What do they look like? How big are they? Are they made of gold? I don't know. And I don't know anybody that does. But they flow down the middle of a broad street of the city. In my mind's eye, I see a street separated by the river and the trees of life. And we're going to get there. What do you see? The tree of life is on both sides of the river, it says. the tree of life. Now, folks, we need to stop right there and go back to Genesis. There were two trees in the garden that God forbade them, Adam and Eve, to eat from. Well, he actually forbade them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They never tried to eat from the tree of life. Had they done so, they would have immediately had immortality. And that, folks, is the reason that he drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. 
He did not want them to eat of the tree of immortality because they had sinned. And so he cursed them. <clears throat> and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So the tree of life was on the both sides of the river. What did that tree look like? Was it a giant tree like a redwood? Was it a short bush-like tree bearing fruit that you could reach and pluck? I don't know. Was the bark rough like a pine or slick like a, bur a beech? I don't know. What did the fruit taste like? Are they fruit we would recognize? Or is it some other fruit that we don't know anything about? I kind of hope it's like peaches and apples and oranges myself. <laughs> um, the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Are these the nations that if you go back into Revelations 20 and read that are at war with God? I don't know. Or are they rep the representatives of all the nations that have come to Christ? Again, I don't, I'm not sure. Sometimes a Sunday school lesson will create more questions than it does answers. That's a good one because it makes us think. So we get here and we know that the leaves of the trees or for the healing of the nations. I recently had an opportunity to speak these, talk about these verses in a service of a man that I thought a lot of. I could see him pulling the leaves off of the tree and rubbing it on his arms and his body, the broken body that he had and how his body was restored as a result of this of the leaves, the healing of the leaves, from the leaves. I could just see that in my mind as I, as I think about this. And there will no longer be any curse. What curse? Well, if we went back to Genesis 3, 16 through 19, we would read where God cursed man and woman for sin. Man he made to toil the soil, and he, he put thistles and weeds against him. And if you've ever tried to keep the nut grass out of your garden, you know exactly what, he's, <laughs> what that toil is about. And the, and the woman he caused to have childbearing pain. What would it like have been like had that not happened? Well, folks, when we get to heaven, there'll be no more sin. There'll be no more pain. They'll wipe away the tears. In fact, some of the apocalyptic uh, books that are not recorded in our Bible, uh, one of which is Ezra. Ezra talks about what won't be present in heaven, the sun, the moon, the stars, pain, Healing, because we'll all be healed. Wow. You getting a little better picture of what heaven's going to be like? The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. They will dwell among us. They'll dwell with us. We shall see his face. What does God's face look like to you? I can't picture it. I cannot form a picture of what God's face looks like. It's too intimidating. The Bible is full of stories of, of people who, who did see God's face and how it made them glow and have a, an aura or light about them. Will we be like that? I don't know. I do know that his name will be on our foreheads. Wow, 
you know, that's that's kind of be kind of different. Some some folks will have we will have his name tattooed across our forehead. I don't know whether it'll be a tattoo or not, but you get the idea. It'll be there. Night will no longer exist. And people will not need lamplight or sunlight because the Lord God will give them light. Wow. I can't imagine. Here is a representation of what some artist thinks that heaven is going to look like. Let's spend just a minute talking about this. According to the best calculations that can be made from by man, it'll be somewhere around 1,300 to 1,500 miles high. 15, 1,300 to 1,500 miles long and wide. The streets will be made of gold. I, I'm sure that we can only imagine that we cannot conceive of this in any realistic manner. We have to use our imaginations. And we will reign forever and ever. And you know what our job will be? Our job will be to worship God. That'll be our sole job. Let's look at some of the questions in the student book and see if we can think about them for a minute. When you talk about water, it quenches thirst. But how about the spiritual water? And are you spiritually thirsty now? What do you need? You know, folks, as we go through life, we're, we're going to face troubles. And troubles are opportunities to reflect God to the world, to see how we how mature we are and how we can handle trouble. Some folks show tremendous grace. Others become bitter. I can't tell you how I would how I can handle what is yet to come, but I have tried to handle what I have faced with the realization that from our troubles comes growth, our spiritual growth. <clears throat> what difference does it make to you to know that one day you'll see God's face? Oh, oh. Can you see how important it is to hold out that hope? What a great thing God has given us, the hope of better times ahead regardless of whatever we're going through right now. God has promised us better days. At the time that this book was written, there was an emperor in Rome named Domitian, and he persecuted the Christians hard. He was having them quartered. He was having them fed to the, to the wild animals. He was outright killing them. And this was a terrible, terrible time in Christianity. John was inspired to write this book to show them that better times are ahead. And when we think about what those Christians went through, eh, sitting in Brookhaven, Mississippi and going through a little isolation isn't all that bad, is it? Hmm. What promises about the light from God, can you claim and share for yourself and others? Our spiritual uh, growth is dependent on, on our continually searching God's word. And that's what we try to do is to grow. Just, just some, if I can just take one little baby step forward this week, and how can I reflect God's grace to this world that we're living in? What do I need to be doing? What can I do? That's where we need to put our emphasis. 
<clears throat> Let's look now at another question or two, and then we'll talk about wrapping up. Listen to this as I read from one scholar. John's description of this city is cosmic. The city's size and majesty are overwhelming. The vision does not allow God's kingdom to be equated with any earthly city. Revelation resists the idea any form of social or political organization can claim to be the final one. So if we have citizenship in God's new city, how does that affect our lives here and now? Wow. Do we write off our present communities or as headed for the cosmic garbage dump? Or is God expecting us to make the world better where we are? I think that's our challenge, is to make your world better wherever you are and my world better wherever I am. What aspects of this New Jerusalem city do you want to see in our world today? I think about the crystal clear water. And then you read about the nations in Africa that don't have clear water. But you don't have to go that far. Go to Flint, Michigan. The lead, lead in that city is beyond the, what is considered healthy. So we have children growing up drinking unsafe water. Surely we should be able to do something to correct that, don't you think? Well, as we get ready to leave, I want you to think about there will no longer be any curse. The tree of life will bear its fruits and its leaves will be used for healing. And the light of God will shine. Don't you want it to come now? Come quickly, Lord. Come quickly. Now let's read the closing prayer. Found on page 81 of our Sunday school book. God of light and life for all, grant me today the ability to trust in your promises, not only for the future, but for today. In whatever circumstances I find myself, use me to share your life-giving water and your illuminating and guiding light with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming today. If you have questions, I encourage you to either contact the pastoral staff or me, and as best I can, I'll try to answer your questions, and we'll have to go to the Word to get the answers. Thank you for watching.